Hi everyone. I was looking back through my videos the other day and noticed that my last video on slow stitch had gone absolutely berserk and had been really popular and last time I did a video like this we were looking at how to form a composition using fabric as an inspiration and I was using lots of bright colours and we talked a lot about how to balance those colours out. Now last time I did a poll on Instagram my followers over there chose a neutral palette for the next page in my Stitch Alphabet book and I thought it might be nice to do a tutorial on how I put that panel together. So this is the book that I am gradually putting together. I don't follow a schedule for this, I just do pages as and when. And the idea for this came from some books that I was given a couple of years ago. The first one is the Embroidery Stitch Bible by Betty Barnden. And this is a great book. It has loads and loads of different stitches, but it also covers lots of different types of embroidery. So there's hard anger in there. There's some canvas work. There is cruel embroidery, all sorts of different approaches to needle craft that you can play around with and experiment with. Now the book that gave me the idea for my own stitch book was this one which is the A to Z of embroidery stitches. It's a search press book. There are loads and loads of these A to Z books of all different topics and I thought it would be really nice to group together all the stitches that begin with each letter and make a sampler. They've now added a volume two that's got a whole other batch of stitches so that's really expanded my repertoire as well and these are books that I come back to over and over and over again for stitch ideas I will often refer back to them so if I just start by giving you a tour of the book up to date so each page features a felt letter and I basically just cobble together some different fabrics and textures in the background as my base and then I add some stitching over the top making often making little clusters of the different stitches and I like to experiment with different ways of using the stitch and playing with the stitch so that was my A page my B page used the uh, floral fabric just over on the right there as the colour scheme and I really like this one. It's got some stitches that I really enjoy. I like the blanket stitch wheels. There's bullion knots on there as well. My C page, I took inspiration from circles because that also begins with C. And I really like this one. It's got some of the stitches that I use most often here. I put a few Suffolk puffs on there as well. And I like to embellish the letter if I can with a stitch that's part of the selection. Now when I got to D I started polling my followers on Instagram and asking them for their ideas about colour inspiration. This was the first one chosen by my followers. Orange isn't a colour that I use very often but it does have some really nice stitches. There's loads of detached stitches on here. E again was the result of a poll and this was my worst nightmare because I really don't like pink but I put some English paper piecing in there as well just to play around with the theme. Now my F page seems to be the most popular one I've ever done. I love this fish fabric. This was again chosen by my followers. I love the fact that fish begins with F as well so it's themed in that way and this really is my favourite. It's got all of my favourite stitches on so there's feather stitch, fly stitch, we've got fishbone stitch there, French knot and I do like to try and use the stitches in different ways as well so the stems of those leaf sprigs there are really elongated fly stitch lines and just I like playing around even the buttons are attached using stitches beginning with F. G it was based around a fabric again and so that flower in the middle was what inspired the colour scheme and we've got some really nice textures on this page so we've got the Gyordi's knot which is often called turkey work that adds that sort of fluffy texture. We've got granitos which are like little 
beads or most of thread and we've got some fill stitches on there and then H again is another one that I really love it's not colours that I would normally use but I really love the way it came together and again my followers chose that floral fabric just below the H there as the colour scheme so again we've got lots of nice textures and we've got some herringbone stitch which I love using it's one of my go-to stitches to use all the time so there's loads of different things going on there and my eye page is the one that I did my last video on so we use that purple peacock feather fabric that's right down the center and we try to balance out the different colors that are in that fabric across the piece and I gave you a tutorial on how I form my composition I will link that video at the top of the screen this one has some interwoven and interlaced stitches which I really like um, it's got interlaced herringbone band which is a real head scratcher <laughs> um, I use that in one of my winging it stitches of the month videos as well so that one's quite a tricky one to get your head around and I really love this one and then my J page was very different because I could only actually find one stitch that began with J. So I decided I was going to do a type of embroidery instead. So this is Jacobean embroidery and it basically is a style of embroidery from the 17th century where simple stitches are used to fill shapes of flowers, fruit and birds mostly, but sometimes animals as well and I did a series of reels over on Instagram showing you how I filled in each section and we created this rainbow flower. The one stitch with uh, that does begin with J is Japan stitch which is on the little uh, circles it's that uh, those little curved lines I'm not a fan it's a little bit like satin stitch but you offset each stitch and it forms a sort of diagonal line I, I don't enjoy it at all I don't think it creates a particularly good effect it might work better on a counted fabric but just as free stitching it was not one for me but that's where we're up to and I polled my followers for my K page and neutrals was what was chosen so I thought I would film myself putting this uh, base together and uh, show you how I go about it so I've got just normal machine thread here and I've got my layer of natural linen which I'm using for all of my pages and I've marked out my six inch square in the middle there and left around about an inch border all the way around the outside just so that if the panels move or stretch or distort in any way I've got a little bit of margin for error there and I've got a little piece of cotton batting as well so this is 100% cotton quilt batting and I just cut out a square to match and I layer it up and I really like the way that the stitches pull into that and create some sort of squashiness and texture on the page it just makes everything a little bit more substantial and robust so the first thing that I do is tack those two layers together and I'm just going round the outside in a fairly large running stitch I'm not being especially careful I do here and there just smooth out that surface fabric to make sure that I'm not stitching any lumps and bumps you can see me just stroking it out there just to make sure that surface fabric is nice and flat and I just work my way around the outside I don't worry too much about knots these stitches are going to be removed you can see I've changed thread color there I just ran out of purple so I've finished tacking around the edge now and those two layers are nice and secure now during winging it last year we did a whole month on neutrals I think it was October and I will link that video at the top of the screen in a card so that you can go and watch those we talked about what constitutes neutral colors and how to mix them and how to blend them so do go and check that out so I've gathered quite a lot of different neutrals here and 
I've got some warmer neutrals and some cooler neutrals so even though both of these fabrics are grey you can see the bottom one is a more green grey the top one is more silver blue grey and here I've got an almost yellow grey that is different again so there is quite a lot of variety in a neutral palette and I've got some fabrics here that have got little touches of colour so I've got a blue here this one's got some blue in it and some greens as well and I've got a B fabric here that's got some yellow in it and I've got all sorts here and what we're going to try and do is think about textures and tone so we've got loads of different options and i'm going to start with this b fabric i really like the texture of this selvage it's got a sort of frayed selvage here and i'm just going to cut a strip off just as a starting point so i won't actually use any bees i'll save that for another project and i've just got that bit of texture there at the edge and you can see that we've got quite a light tone here it's very similar to my background fabric i don't want that tufty bit right at the edge because i don't want it to be lost when i trim the fabric down and i want my strips to be overlapping my borderline so that when i cut down my fabric i get a nice neat edge now i've got a different tone here i've got a much darker fabric and that is going to bring a little bit of balance to the pale neutral that i've started with and what i want to do is kind of layer these up and think about how i can arrange these fabrics to enhance the effects of the features of the fabric rather than diminish them so if i leave my pale strip with the tufty edge on the surface I do run the risk of that texture being just completely lost against the background fabric so I've got a darker fabric here that I'm just going to slot underneath to sort of draw our attention to that frayed edge now I've got a floral fabric here and this is a tricky one because it's got all the different tonal values there. So we've got a light background, we've got a mid-tone grey and then we've got that darker sort of ochre colour and it's quite busy and a neutral palette doesn't have to actually be all planes. I've got some sort of grid work lattice spots there on that dark piece that i've tucked underneath and i think adding some floral might actually bring a bit of life to this panel so even though it is neutral it doesn't mean it has to be dull i've got a little piece of cream lace here and i think it might be nice to use it i quite like the scalloped edge and again i'm just testing it out auditioning it almost against different fabrics i think it does get lost against that floral i, I do want to use it i'm going to hold fire with it a little bit so now i've got a pale strip a light colored strip and two dark pieces and what i need now is a sort of mid-tone so somewhere in between the very pale neutrals that I've got in the background and the darkest neutrals that I've slotted underneath. So I'm just going to take out a section of this that fits my tonal value. There are darker sections but I quite like the sort of line work on this piece and I have decided I think that there's too much of that floral so I'm just going to trim it back a little bit just to tone it down. And so now I've got a mid-tone in the mix and already that composition is looking a little bit more balanced. Now I've got this dark at the top left and I want to echo that somewhere else in the panel. I don't want the eye to be completely pulled to that top left corner. So I've got a nice sort of checkered tartan here in some nice darker shades of brown and I want a little piece of that not a huge amount but a little piece that is going to pull the eye down to the bottom right so I've got a sort of 
tonal line across the center. I need to think about how I'm going to make whoever's looking at this piece, how I'm going to make their eye travel around my panel. And the eye will tend to be drawn to either the busiest sections or the darkest sections. And so I need to think about where I'm going to place those darker fabrics so that my eye isn't just pulled in one direction. Now you can see I've pulled out some strands from the edges there because everything is looking a bit flat other than that tufty edge that we started with. So I've just created a bit of a frayed edge there on that checkered piece to sort of add a little bit more life. Now I want to echo those squares, that grid pattern in that checkered piece. I've got a nice little bit of gingham here that again has got a frayed selvage and I think that might be nice to add, add in somewhere. So I'm just thinking about where to place that darker valued fabric that's going to create a sort of pathway around my panel. So I'm just testing it out in different places and looking for how it draws my eye. And I quite like it here because it sort of echoes that light and dark piece, that the floral piece that's got the light background and the darker flowers. I quite like the fact that this one is both light and dark as well. And I think it might be nice to almost create a mirror across that mid-tone striped piece in the middle. So I think I'm going to leave it there for now. What I'm trying to do also is not have everything lining up. I don't want to create grid work. And so I'm trying to offset the edges of the pieces, making them overlap and cut into each other because that breaks up those really strong, stark lines. So I think I've got quite a lot of light and quite a lot of dark. I need some more mid-tones and this floral is a really good mid-tone piece, particularly because I'm going to break it up and cover up that very busy bit in the section. So we've got a little bit of pattern, but it's toned down because I've cut across it cut across the extra colours and covered those up. And so now I've got a nice mid-tone piece that is taking the eye somewhere different. And by putting it underneath, I'm also drawing attention to that tartan piece and it almost sort of frames that tartan piece a little bit to draw the eye there. I quite like this fabric that's got these solid motifs on it that, that are separated out and I want to get one of those in somewhere. So I've just cut out a motif and now I'm just tinkering with the edges just to make sure we've got things fitting nicely. So I've got those dark areas scattered around and then I've got my mid-tone panel so I've got my motif piece and that striped mid-tone and the the floral it's like a Sanderson fabric over on the right hand side there that's offering my mid-tones and then I've got some pops of lighter colours here and there so the roses on that Sanderson fabric give a pop of a lighter colour and we've got the checkers on the gingham fabric that are offering pops of really very light pale shades and this is really an exercise in tonal value if you want to create a balanced composition in neutrals it's going to be all about the tones now i want to get that piece of lace in because i just think it adds something extra that's visual and I've got a lighter piece of lace as well here that I really like that I think might add a little bit of something extra and so this is pretty much what I'm happy with I've got a sort of journey so my eye can follow the lighter shades around I've got that lace and that first strip that we put on then i've got some mid-tones that my eye can find and then i've got these darker stronger colors 
that take my eye to different places on this panel and I'm really quite happy with the arrangement there. The temptation with a slow stitch panel is to just keep fiddling about all the time looking for the perfect arrangement and you're never going to get it. So my advice is when you are happy that you've got an arrangement that works just stick to it and I'm just then doing a final check making sure that I don't have anything that is too lined up so I want things to be offset and breaking into each other so that all those harsh lines are broken up and so that just needs a tiny little bit of adjustment I've just pulled that dark piece down from the top now a good idea at this point is to take a picture of your composition because when you're tacking things down they can move and fall off and it just helps to make sure that you are keeping the composition that you actually want rather than one that happens accidentally. I'm just getting ready to tack these pieces in place and I'm just going to put some pins quite strategically. I don't want loads of pins because they do cause puckering in your work and it can sometimes affect the finish. So I've just, I think, put five pins in there and I've tried to put them in places where they're going to be holding multiple layers of fabric down. Now, if you want to remove your tacking stitches at the end, I do suggest using a stronger colour. I tend to just leave my tacking stitches in and I, I don't mind them at all. They tend to sort of disappear when you've added your stitching on top. So I've got a neutral tacking thread here that is just going to be really subtle in the background and now I'm tacking in a far more controlled way. So I'm trying to keep my stitches relatively neat and quite small and I'm trying to keep them smaller on the front than they are on the back so I'm just catching the odd few strands of fabric really to hold them down it's more like stab stitches I suppose by the time I've finished my stitches are about half a centimeter at most I've stitched down the first layer and I've then got a sort of a crossroads and what I like to do is allow the fabrics to dictate to me which direction I stitch in. And I try and, like with the pins, I try and stitch in a way that's going to catch multiple layers down at once. So now I've got all my little scraps of fabric stuck down. I'm quite happy with that as a background and I am ready to start stitching. Do let me know in the comments below if you would like a part two of this looking at how I go about embellishing this panel and slow stitching it. Thanks so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this, do give us a like. It really helps us out. Really appreciate it. I'll put a video here that is along a similar theme to this one. Put a video up here that's best for you. And if you'd like to subscribe, do click on our logo down here and it makes it really easy for you. So I hope you found that helpful and I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.